good afternoon dear participants i hope you have completed your lab assignment and uh, have assembled back into the classrooms uh, this is an extra hour we realize that we have some additional useful things to share with you so i had requested in fact a couple of my colleagues uh, to organize special talks uh, the first one to have agreed is uh, my colleague professor kavi arya uh, he is an expert in embedded systems in fact he drives much of our robotic activities and his penchant is to use these robots as sort of learning equipment so he's going to talk to us about robo enhanced teaching today i'm very thankful to him for uh, uh, sort of adding value to this workshop one natural question which might arise in your minds is that in an ist workshop on databases why are we talking about robots so let me tell you why i think two important reasons why i think uh, this and this kind of talk are important first of all why traditionally the databases are supposed to be residing on your regular servers containing data mostly concerning the businesses such as banks or manufacturing industry or whatever increasingly that facet is not true in fact not only in iit but at many other places there has been work going on on one side very large databases but on the other side micro databases you would have heard of for example uh, microchips called smart cars there has been a lot of activity on smart car databases which will hold variety of useful information for individuals in fact the uh, unique id program of the country through its various agencies user agencies expects to give smart cards to every indian eventually which will hold not only the pertinent information about user id but many of these cards when used for financial transactions could hold small databases pertaining to the financial information of the individual clearly databases encompass the whole world from micro to macro additionally if you notice the spread of information technology in the human society which started with mainframes which continued with the onslaught of small servers which continued further with the onslaught of pcs and laptops which we use is actually continuing in a exponentially increasing fashion through embedded systems we see these embedded systems every now and then in the real world whether it's a washing machine whether it's a tv whether it's a small digital watch on your hand practically everything has a processor has memory and now increasingly these fellows will have databases it is important therefore that we are able to connect our knowledge of the exciting field of databases with what are the possibilities with other associated dimensions of it most importantly the embedded system dimension the second reason why i think this talk is pertinent is because we are going to see uh, professor kaviare is going to share with us how robots can be used for enhanced teaching there are in fact attempts here on setting up virtual laboratories setting up a collaborative learning environment where small robots would be in the hands of participants at remote places and talks and lectures could be conducted from one place where experiments could be done at various places very plumly falling in the domain of the kind of workshops that we are conducting so i am happy to welcome professor kavi arya here thank you kavi thank you for agreeing uh, to give this talk i'll just give a brief introduction professor kavi arya did his uh, bachelor's in england and uh, did his phd from uh, Uh, oxford and worked in uh, the coveted ibm research labs for some time before he came back to india he was actually working with uh, tata research and development uh, center at pune for quite some time before some of us could sort of lure him to come back to academics he has been with the school of it for many years and now with the merged department of computer science and engineering 
and spearheads our activities in the embedded systems, specifically on the robotics side. So thank you very much, Kavi. All yours now. Thank you. Okay, where shall I start? Thank you for a very uh, apt introduction to the relevance of this embedded systems talk. You uh, provided the very important link into what I am going to speak about uh, today. Um, this is very right. Uh, there are so many ways to motivate this talk. For instance, I will give you a totally different way of looking at things as to why it is important that we study this area. Robots and embedded systems are basically computers inside devices. Typically these used to be single functional and the computers used to be very small with very small memories and stuff like that. But now what you used to have in a mainframe in the old days, you are getting on a phone and now as embedded uh, intelligence if you like, even in things like uh, uh, room cleaning robots and other kind of robots that you get. So, it is extremely important given the kind of scenarios that we anticipate in uh, the future that we study this area of embedded uh, systems and robotics. Robots and robotics has been cloaked in very, very high tech uh, 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 veneers if you like in the past, but actually they can range from the very, very simple devices to very, very complex devices, right. So, I will share with you a bit of the excitement that we have here. So, I teach a subject called embedded systems and two flavors of this run at IIT Bombay at the same time. In the electrical engineering department, we have uh, this subject taught as building things out of uh, microcontrollers, right. And in the computer science department, we teach given things, how do you program it? So, we call it embedded systems software, where we teach a software centric view of an embedded system. So, we talk about the vocabulary of embedded systems, we talk about how different they are from uh, conventional systems and uh, the sorts of software that you need, the real time operating systems that you need, uh, the theory that goes into it and uh, new languages like model based uh, design languages like Esterel, Luster and SCADE to build these kind of systems. So, what I am going to share with you here is something much more specific. Uh, we have a project from the MHRD called E Yantra, where what we have done is, we, uh, we found it very useful to develop an educational robot through which we have taught embedded systems over the last 5 years. So, we have kind of evolved these robots and the robots are now at a point that we can actually deploy them in engineering colleges. Right. So, you can uh, think about how to incorporate them in your uh, curriculum, uh, whatever you teach. I will give you an example where there is a pressing need for uh, devices like that. Typically, many BE engineering students in the final year want to do a project and they are very hard pressed for ideas. Many of them I found in engineering colleges want to uh, do a project with robots and robotics, right. And they find that uh, first of all robots are not available in the market, if they are available they are too expensive and they are imported robots which if you buy uh, there is no support and uh, if anything breaks you had it and it is too expensive and the next year uh, nobody has got any robots. So, typically what they do is that they go about building their own robot and they buy components of the market, build the robot and say that okay fine I will do a project after I build this robot and they find that by the time their time is up, the robot is half built or it is a very kludgy robot and they just write up the report and go away. And next year another student comes wants to do a project in, in robotics and does exactly the same thing. So, you are not able to go beyond that. So, what we have done now is that we thought we were creating a robot, but what we have actually tried to create is an ecosystem. That means, once we put these robots out, you should be able to service them, maintain them, buy spare parts and all that and we have tried to create the entire environment well entire environment and uh, we have tried to make these robots available at a low cost. So, we have licensed these robots to manufacturers outside and the entire design of our robots is open source. So, it is up to you to take it and refine it and improve it and so on. So, let me uh, get on with the talk and uh, 
the overview of the talk is this, um, I shall talk a little bit about the E-Yantra project. Our vision is we want to create engineers who can build complex machines, okay. That sounds vague, but typically problems in life when you get them do not compartmentalize themselves, you know. They do not say I am a database problem, I am a real time systems problem, I am this problem or that problem is just a problem that you need to solve, right. And increasingly we find that the most interesting problems are multidisciplinary. That means they do not fall into one domain. Like for instance, increasingly we see all these devices around us, right. Like for instance, an iPod and an iPad and all these kind of things. These were not built by someone saying I want an iPad and this is the specs of it. Now you go away and design me the hardware and you software guys, you build the software uh, for this. That is not how it works. It is a team activity. You have the algorithm experts, you have the battery technology experts, you have the display technology experts, manufacturing technology experts, Steve Jobs there saying that look this is what I want. So, he comes up with this is what I want, it should be this size, this is what I should be able to do about it and you guys, you tell me what I can do, right. And they sit down and negotiate because if, if for instance he says I want an 8 hour battery life, right, you have the choice between putting a very big battery which will make the device very, very bulky or you can make the algorithm, right, all the codex and all that inside much more uh, clever. So, they consume less battery. So, there are lots of, of uh, compromises that need to be played out between these engineers and typically they design these kind of products by sitting across a table and negotiating, right, what will be the impact of this uh, compromise and so on. So, the mindset required to build these kind of products is very different from the typical uh, mindset of an engineer who just uh, is doing some software development and things like that. So, this is what we want to create a kind of a tinkerer who can think about needs in the marketplace and they can think of some automation to answer that need and to build that technology they will need databases, real time systems or whatever it is and produce a product to put out there in the marketplace, right. So, we will talk a bit about the e uh, program. We have a core team at the moment led by our program manager Malti Baru. We have uh, someone in admin and a workshop team. So, I will talk a little bit about these uh, workshops that uh, we do. And we have an educational robot that we have developed which has been licensed out and it is available online on the net and we will go into more details. So, this is the motivation this slide. I typically start my embedded systems class with this slide, right. So, these are metaphorical uh, indicators for various disciplines like for instance, you have a microscope here which refers to uh, pathology and medicine science and things like that, handcuffs for uh, forensic applications, military applications there is a tank here, consumer appliances there is a kettle here, uh, um, ships there is a boat here, music there is a guitar and so on. Can you think of which of these these areas of our lives do not have an embedded system in it, right. I will pause for a moment here. So, I will just point out you have a calculator, you have a house and various things, you have television, you have a dentist here, you have a washing machine, syringe, a telephony, scarecrow in a field, camera a car, automobile, a saw, traffic lights, a balloon. In which of these fields do embedded systems not occur? So, if you think about it a little bit, actually they are in every aspect of our lives. In a car, almost 30 to 40 percent of the cost of the car is in the electronics inside a car. Right, electronics, steer by wire systems, uh, your uh, engine control unit, your anti lock braking system, your transmission control unit, uh, especially the high end cars, about 40 percent at least of the cost of a car is, is, is in the electronics. And uh, wherever we see electronics, I just see software, right, software which is running on some hardware. So, this is increasingly, as you can see, the scope and the size of the entire market of devices which need 
embedded systems programmers right and 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 there is a distinct change which is happening from the use of computers to computers which are embedded everywhere right in your devices in your clothes in your appliances and at your workplace home everything and there is a complete change in the interaction of these devices growing number of critical applications and they are infiltrating our lives. So, we need to we need to know more about how to how to look at these things and how to build these things. So, that is the basis of our embedded systems course and what we are trying to do is sensitize people to the kind of changes which are happening around them right. Changes computing without computers what does that mean? There is tremendous changes in how we design and deliver computer power. In the old days you had mainframes, a few mainframes could do all the jobs that you want. Now, computers are everywhere right. You have reconfigurable computing where through just a few commands and in microseconds you can load a new hardware onto an FPGA and get essentially new hardware right. And everything is speeding up because we are turning software into hardware right. And there is no computer there to slow us down anymore. My PhD student Samir Sasrabuddha has just completed a PhD where he takes a C program, you give him a C program and he gives you hardware right. So, he converts that C program code if you like into a, an automaton which he can burn onto an FPGA or you can build an ASIC out of it or what have you. So, that totally changes the way you think about software and hardware. There are new ways of designing and delivering computer capability right. Like for instance, originally we had mainframes, then we had PCs, now mobile phones right. And increasingly you have the cloud, the network is the computer right. Nobody wants to uh, play around or fiddle around with their PCs and desktops, there is too much of a pain, antivirus software and the OS and the machine becoming slow. Why cannot we rent out computing power from the cloud as much as we need right. The entire structure of the electronics and the computing industry is changing. Now, many of you will know uh, 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 the answer to this. Who is the largest manufacturer of cameras? Right. The largest manufacturer of cameras, right. Some will say Canon, some will say Nikon, some will say what Panasonic, Sony, right. But would you know that the largest manufacturer of cameras is actually Nokia at the moment? Okay, Nokia, the number of cameras you, that you have in the phone that people use as a primary uh, device. And things are changing, right. It is changing the products that people buy, the way they buy and use them. Like for instance, we had tape recorders, now we have Walkman, then we had digital players, then we had the iPad and iPod and God knows what will come next. Books are becoming redundant with these new uh, iPad like of uh, like devices right and uh, Kindle from Amazon.com and so on. And mainframes are becoming smaller mini computers, PCs becoming servers and now they are all moving back into the cloud right. And this is all changing how money is made from delivering products to customers, typically electronic products right. In, in the old days it is physical things which made money. Now, it is basically vaporware and ideas that make money. In fact, a colleague of mine who was the head of marketing in TCS, this was about 6 years ago told me, Kavi it is amazing right. In the old days, it used to be money which used to make money. Now, it is ideas that make money right. So, we need to think about all these things and we need to consider what our place will be in addressing the kind of challenges that come out of these things right. We need to think about devising products for the local marketplace. So, one challenge we throw to the faculty who visit our workshops here is that we tell them that once we have shown you how to use these robots and we have shown you how you can incorporate it into your uh, curriculum, you must be stimulating students to work on interesting projects. You should look at your industrial catchment area, the industries which are in the vicinity of your college and think of what kind of automation you can build for them right and hatch these as student projects and maybe become a consultant to the local industry in automation and things like that. So, these are the kind of changes we are hoping because the 
society that you are living in is, 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 is going to distinctly change. In India, we might not have the burden of legacy. We can skip several generations of technology to jump into the latest as has happened with mobile phones, right. We could never have thought of the, uh, of the huge deployment of mobile phones that we have in this country 10 or 20 years ago. I suggest that we look at robotics in a kind of similar way, right. Like you find PCs now, you are going to find robots now, but they will not be like the, the, the Star Wars kind of robots that you see. They will be intelligent little vacuum cleaners, they will be little floor sweepers, they will be dishwashers, right. Buys are becoming very expensive, you do not get buys anymore, right, to, to do your dishes and to clean your houses and so on. And if they come, they are very unreliable and increasingly with the better state of education in this country, they will not want to be buys anymore or maids and things like that. So, you will have to think of automation. Now, much of the automation that comes from abroad is suited to, to uh, situations abroad, environments abroad. They do not suit our requirements, right. Small houses, lots of clutter, wetness around, humidity, all these kind of things. So, we need to think of ways to build these kind of devices for our own uses at cost points which suit our requirements. And typically, we will not be able to import these devices. Right. So, we need to build up these skills. So, that is what our goal is in this e Yantra project. Every child needs to be equipped with this kind of knowledge for the future. Okay. So, here is our object, our objective to trigger a robotic revolution, right, rather grandiose, right, aim high and you reach somewhere interesting. And how do we achieve our goal? We share our knowledge and we encourage you to share your knowledge with others. So, we have started giving workshops. We have covered some 120 uh, colleges where we call two faculty from each of those uh, colleges. We train them in the use of the robots. We introduce them to all the course material here. We show them how to run, um, run an embedded the systems project and things like this. And uh, then we equip them with two robots each and they go back to start exploring. And then incrementally, I will share with you now how we can have a greater engagement with the colleges. So, we design, deploy robots for teaching in engineering colleges. We conduct workshops for faculty and for students and we partner with more colleges, right. If we find some enthusiastic faculty in places, we would like to partner with them and see what we can do with them. We create and encourage you to create open source content based on these robots, right, which we share with others on our, our e Yantra website. And then we will, our job is to keep on evolving these robots, come up with new kind of robots and to, and to just make all this whole thing happen. Typically what happens, treat these robots as a pen, right. The pen is not interesting in itself. What is much more interesting is the story that you write with the pen. And the story that you write with the pen in this case will require knowledge of artificial intelligence, databases, real time systems, engineering knowledge, engineering skills, embedded systems design skills, all sorts of skills. But typically what happens are students do not have access to this pen in the first place. So, this robot that we have is just a pen and at this point, let us share with you what this initial robot is. This is a robot which we have developed over the last few years and it is reasonably low cost. It is 15,000 rupees and is based on an Atmega 2560 uh, processor. The design is open source, it is reasonably modular and the documentation is very high quality. It is there on the website for you to download and support through various agencies including a company which manufactures and sells these and is very good for teaching and research and there is lot of software that we built on this robot, right. So, I will just describe this robot to you. It has got uh, five proximity sensors which can sense up to one and a half meters to millimeter accuracy. Right. It's got an LCD display, it's got touch sensors and it's got three white line sensors at the bottom with which it can sense whether it's on a white line or not to help it navigate. And all the, all the signal conditioning is done on the lower board and the upper board here is a daughter board on which you, uh, you can use various processors. Like if you are teaching an 8051 based uh, uh, course, you can put an 8051 daughter board and you can write 8051 code or you can have an Atmega 2560 daughter board or you can have uh, an ARM 7 based 
daughter board or we are creating new boards with uh, FPGAs on it and uh, things like that. Okay. So, this, this project tries to address the weakness of our education system especially in computer science where there is a lack of experimental skills. Right. So, uh, we will come to that. We have used these robots very successfully in courses like uh, microcontrollers, uh, embedded systems in computer science, uh, uh, it has been used to teach a mechatronics course in aero, uh, control systems course, uh, sensors and actuators, instrumentation, measurement and calibration and so on. Okay. This slide just shows you uh, the situation that we found on the ground about 5 to 6 years ago where the cheapest robots were about 30 to 40 thousand rupees on the net and uh, even if we bought them they would not come with support and things like that. So, that is when our initial versions were about 12,000 rupees and 15,000 rupees and since then we have uh, developed these robots to be reasonably rugged right as uh, we will discuss. So, this is a slide that just shows you the various kind of kludgy robots that we built along the way in, in arriving at our nice robot. And the ecosystem that we have which you folks can use is we have three different flavors of robots at the moment with uh, different uh, processors. We have documentation for each of these, we have an extensive hardware manual and a software manual and uh, things like that. We have teaching material which is lecture slides, course notes, assignments, quizzes, how to set up and administer this lab, lots of project videos and more importantly the code. right? So, you can take somebody else's story and build on it. I okay, will we'll, give you a small demo of the sorts of projects that the students have done. Uh, there is support for this on a website called eyantra.org and uh, there is a company which manufactures these robots and there will be more now and it supports it with uh, spare parts and all this also. Lots of participants till date like for instance, uh, National Institutes of Technology and uh, other colleges. Okay. This is the first workshop that we had in uh, December 2009, where uh, there was one uh, Professor Nagla there uh, who took all these things and very enthusiastically deployed it at NIT Jalandhar. And we were very happy to see a few months later that he sends us back an update saying that our students have been uh, have learned the basic skills of this embedded uh, program and mobile robot uh, in a workshop that uh, we came back and conducted under e yantra at our college and after that these guys the students actually bought components locally and uh, built a very interesting robot and then got written about in the local newspapers because this little robot of theirs goes and cleans up a barber shop Right. So, it is the same robot, but with a little vacuum cleaner, it goes and picks up all the hair in a barber shop. Right. So, this is what they were able to do through a participation in the e yantra program, if you like. This is what our undergraduate lab looks like at IIT Bombay, where we have everything on a laptop and we have a robot which they program through the laptop and uh, they do some very interesting projects. I right. will give you, I will show you a video actually of this. Okay. So, what I will do now is that let me show you a few videos. We have a problem with uh, routing the laptop uh, video directly into the uh, uh, video feed, but what we have done is that each of the faculty who have come here we have recorded them giving their feedback. So, you can share with your colleagues what you believed this workshop was like. So, I am sure you cannot hear this too well. So, what I will do is that I will show you some interesting visuals actually. Okay, this is more interesting. This is some of the lab projects which my last uh, class project, had uh, done. So, this is 
So this is a project where the students have taken a version of the robot which has got six legs. So the, this processor can drive something like 18 servo motors. So we uh, we have a robot called a hexapod which can write on uh, on paper. So here is another variant. These students have made this robot climb stairs and then once it reaches the stairs right it does something interesting. Okay, this is something interesting that the students did. They thought, let's make it dance. Okay, here's another project where uh, the students have captured an image, a sketch. Then they've written some image processing software to skeletonize uh, the drawing, and from that they vectorize the drawing, and then they've made that uh, uh, they've they've they made the robot draw that sketch on a sheet of paper right. So, this is how for instance it was drawing the sketch. What they did is that they mounted a pen on a servo motor right and uh, this robot can also wirelessly talk to the PC. So, wirelessly they are giving it uh, commands to move and raise and lower the pen for instance okay. Then there is another lot who wanted to use a sensor inside a mobile phone to drive a robot. So, I bought them a, a we bought them an Android phone, a Motorola Android phone and they used the tilt sensor inside the mobile phone to control the robot through Bluetooth right. So, they also had to first of all wrote software to run inside the phone and uh, they also had to create a small uh, board, a Bluetooth interface board which would uh, receive uh, signals on the robot. Another lot built a hand gesture control wireless uh, vehicle where they built a little board with uh, sensors inside it and by turning the hand right you can guide the robot around a course. Another bunch of guys built a tennis ball collector robot which has a little video camera mounted in the front and the image processing is happening on the PC. So, it is it is seeing an orange ball then it goes close to it and picks it up with arms that these guys have made. So, the robot looks for a blue basket and goes and dumps the ball inside there. These guys have tried to try to emulate an automatic toll tax collection system with two robots. So, first the robot stops at a black patch and then it starts and then when it reaches uh, the camera which is here right on the third black patch it stops and we have written the registration number on a white sheet on the side of the robot. So, the image processing is done to capture the image of the registration number they process it and then they debit that value from the database. And the vehicle owner also gets an SMS on their mobile phone, uh, the fact that uh, their account has been debited right. Here is the last one that I will show here because of uh, shortage of time, farmer assistant robot.
these are the objects that we are using to represent. So, these guys want to sort of uh, to emulate a fruit picking exercise where they see ripe fruits which are red and on the first pass this will go and identify where the fruits are and on the next pass it will actually go and pick up the fruits. Right. So, so, these guys have taken the basic robot and they have just made the mechanisms with which to uh, uh, just actuate and to uh, grip the, 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 the objects and stuff like that. So, the robot is reasonably versatile. So, what we have shared with you here is just about 4 or 5 of 20, 20 very interesting projects that students have done over a course of about 5 to 6 weeks. Right. So, we have an embedded uh, systems course called uh, CS 684 which runs for the MTech students and uh, over a semester they first go through the theory and in the last 5 weeks or 6 weeks of the course they actually spec out a project and they build a project and what you saw were examples of what they did in about 4 to 5 weeks. Now, you too can do these kind of projects very simply by plugging into the e yantra program right all you have to do is a couple of faculty have to come to iit bombay get trained we show you how to use the robots you go back with a couple of robots and see how you can use it on your b engineering projects if there are some lab staff that need to be trained we can accommodate them also in a next workshop and these workshops are running uh, throughout the year so once you have this gyan there are various ways that we can engage you more deeply into this entire exercise. So, this e yantra website e yantra dot org it is actually right is an open source website where we have courseware how to set up the entire embedded systems lab and it has got various assignments and all that on it. You can go and register on this website if you want to attend a workshop or you want to host a workshop, but there are specific ways that uh, uh, we have. So, I will talk more about now the, the partner program model that we have here. Okay. How can colleges take part in this program? Right. So, we have step 1 you come and participate. Participate means that two of your faculty have to come and attend an IIT Bombay workshop for 2 days. You just have to get here and get back. We will look after you here uh, for 2 days and uh, after that you will be able to take these 2 uh, these 2 robots which we give you and start seeing what you can do with it in your college. If you want to participate more deeply right, then you can become an associate where you can arrange the workshop at your college and our team will come and train the people at that workshop right and we will also fund that uh, that exercise. So, it will be at our cost and the third is that we have an e yantra hub or a remote center that means, if faculty are enthusiastic uh, enough then we will treat you as a uh, center which we will help you build, we will help you build the work, uh, uh, the lab and all that and you can host the workshops there and eventually we bring you up to becoming a partner where we can actually fund uh, interesting R and D that you do there. If your students want to build an interesting uh, robot, they will they'll need components, they will need uh, devices, they will need to buy things off the market. 30,000 rupees, 40,000, 50,000 rupees or whatever it is, we can uh, uh, give you money to buy those kind of things. If, if a faculty is enthusiastic enough to want to develop courseware based on these robots, we can uh, pay an honorarium also as far as that goes and better still for this we will have to introduce you as partners to MHRD right to be able to fund uh, you at a deeper level. It can be a few lakhs or whatever it is depending on the need. And uh, you can come up with your own robotic proposals which you can submit then to MHRD if you like and we will help you do that. Okay. So, details of this right step 1 is participation send to uh, faculty to us, they get exposure, they take back 2 robots with them, we give you a certificate that you have taken part in this intelligent work robotics workshop, there are no fees involved, we provide you accommodation and boarding and lodging. You can send back key students who you feel will help the program on the next workshop and now the college has to fill up a questionnaire right giving us information about yourselves and uh, indicating a commitment to deploy these robots in an appropriate way. Okay. Then an associate is where you host the workshop and our team comes and, uh, 
and and uh, delivers the workshop and we are hoping that after this you will become a hub that means that you will conduct these workshops so we will equip you with uh, the robots and all that that you need to uh, conduct the workshops right and uh, in the process the host faculty will get trained and the workshop cost will be borne by us by the e yantra project right the third grade of engagement is where you are uh, 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 conducting your workshop on your own at your location by yourselves without the iit bombay team you target audience from uh, surrounding uh, colleges but the costs will be borne by us right we'll pay for it and uh, certification will be by us that means that we say this is uh, the e yantra project and certificate and the faculty has attended a workshop okay and the robots that you need to conduct these workshops will be uh, provided by us right final is where you turn into a partner where uh, we'll then have to take you with us to mhrd you will sign an mou and uh, we can we are then in the position to give you more money for things like r and d and and an honorarium for developing courseware and stuff like that and you can be given grants to buy uh, research robots depending on the kind of uh, enthusiasm and the resources and uh, the faculty that you have and um, this can lead to more interesting uh, things where you can directly then interact with mhrd uh, right to uh, write proposals and things like that okay so the social impact we feel of this will be to sp to spread the study and the use of robotics in colleges we think it's extremely important create a kind of multidisciplinary manpower right which is not just good at this or that but they can think in terms of solving a problem like for instance uh, once you've learned to play with these robots and you understand how these robots are built there's nothing stopping you from building say a machine which can go and work in a field which can do seeding for instance right or then there's nothing stopping you from building say a small military application right i was just uh, uh, discussing with uh, a colleague from the army this morning that many of the problems that we have to solve when we build interesting applications on the robot can apply to military applications they can apply to uh, civilian applications they can apply to agricultural applications or what have you like for instance based on this experience we have actually uh, built and delivered an autonomous vehicle for a campus which essentially what we've done is that we've uh, built a control system into an autonomous vehicle which is like an electric golf cart and it can autonomously navigate around a uh, campus so what we've done is that whereas our robots they follow a white line based on uh, sensors these have this uh, this vehicle has got a magnetometers built into the bumper and uh, we embed small magnets 1 foot apart on the road slightly below the ground and this vehicle it follows this and takes a number of it takes up to about 5 people passengers um, so it starts it starts motivating you to study much more uh, uh, many other interesting areas okay so the game is to to excite and motivate the study of engineering right and provide opportunities for entrepreneurship that means you might your students might see openings for building various devices and uh, automation equipment for local industry or for other uses and they can actually build with this knowledge uh, these kind of devices and so we are providing manpower for healthcare automobiles large number of industries right to show that engineering is not only about you know just solving this kind of problem or that kind of problem or writing software for this system it can be really fun right and we find that these robots they really excite the students right so especially when you are doing say a be engineering project half the problem is in exciting your students once they are excited they can do amazing things on their own okay so this was the first lot of robots that we deployed we had about uh, 100 of them and uh, this is what they looked like it looked very nice and these have gone out to all the various engineering colleges which came and attended our workshops and uh, the if you want to know more about our project these are the important emails 
the project email is uh, eyantra at uh, cse.iitb.ac.in. Bhuvna looks after our, our admin, so if you have some initial inquiries, uh, you mail to bhuvna at uh, cse. Program manager is malti, so malti at uh, it.iitb.ac.in and malti will uh, take a call with us on things like uh, um, getting people for workshops, for arranging workshops at your college and things like that. So, I have written some important phone numbers also down and uh, there is a website page for registration which is given at the bottom eantra.org slash ci slash workshop slash participate. Okay. So, this is what I wanted to say and I think I am well within time. Uh, we are in a position here to take some interaction or uh, or questions. Meanwhile, I can also show some interesting videos. This is the vehicle that moves around. Good. This is the vehicle that moves around uh, following the magnets in the ground. Uh, some of the older uh, project. This is uh, with these robots, this is adaptive cruise control where a number of robots are following each other maintaining a safe distance, right using the infrared proximity uh, sensors, right. And uh, this is an interesting uh, project done by a systems and control student where he built an inverted pendulum right where uh, there is a potentiometer at the base of this of this uh, uh, dundi if you like uh, through which he controls a robot to balance a stick so this is the uh, uh, the principle behind things like the segway machine which is the people transporter which is uh, two wheels right so here's this again as you can see we like to video everything because uh, typically what happens after a project is done everything is disbanded and you cannot reconstruct the old uh, device again. So, we like to video everything and uh, document it well and everything is up also on the eantra.org website. Here is another interesting project um, instead of two motors we actuate six legs right. So, we get this kind of walking action with an insect. So, this is the same robot but the actuation is not by two DC motors, the actuation is through uh, servo motors which are, are uh, moving legs. Okay. Here is another one, um, this is uh, we were exploring lane merging where uh, two vehicles are, are uh, merging lanes onto an in an automated way. So, we are thinking about intelligent highways and we found that we were able to get a couple of papers in very respected real time systems journals based on this work because the problems were quite interesting. So, my colleague Professor Kriti Ramamritam had done this work with a couple of M Tech students. Right? So, these, these uh, vehicles are doing adaptive cruise control and also automatically uh, well merging onto a highway. Okay. Show you some more. Okay, Here is another one where this is a soccer playing robot. This is about 4 years ago and uh, we have a camera on top a webcam which is looking at an image of the top of this robot based on which it can uh, sense the orientation and position of this robot and is using that to move the orange ball into the goal right as you can see. All these are 4 to 6 week uh, projects basically that students have done uh, on the embedded systems course. Right. Uh, this is another project where we have uh, the same same uh, robot, but actuation now is through three wheels and each of the wheels has got uh, 
a bunch of small wheels which run in a perpendicular axis and by differentially driving these uh, wheels you can get a left right and uh, front back motion also. Okay, fine. So, to put everything in a nutshell, uh, we have got some interesting experience we would like to share with you. We find that robots are a great way to motivate uh, students to do some interesting projects and it motivates them to learn anything that you want. You can have database uh, also on robots where uh, we find for instance, uh, what is a database actually? It is storing a large amount of data and processing it interestingly. So, when you find that uh, robots are negotiating say a large space with lots of obstacles and things like that, they need to store, st store interesting information in interesting ways, so that they can use it to uh, determine what to do next, right. So, um, there are lots of interesting applications which can be built on this and the interesting thing is that these robots, we consider them as, as a pen and it is up to your students and yourselves to develop interesting applications, right and write interesting stories with this pen and to share these stories with other people, right. So, I have just shown you a small number of projects. Other students have done other interesting projects and the nice advantage is that now we are in the process of uploading the documentation, the video, the source code, everything onto our website. So, your students can tomorrow take the same project and build on it, right. They can build on it. That means that that is their starting point. They do not have to build a robot. They can just acquire the robot, take the code and build a more complex app application out of it. And when we are at this stage, then it bec the computer science aspects of the problems that need to be solved become much more interesting. You get problems in networking then, in communication, in image processing, in databases, all sorts of things, right. But you can use the, mot the robots to motivate the teaching of whichever area that you have, okay. So, I would like to pause here. Um, there are some questions, I would like to give the, the um, floor to Valchan College of Engineering. Hello sir. Uh, sir, my question is, uh, which programming tools are used uh, with this hardware? And uh, second question is, can, can we interface these hardware with the programming tools directly? Okay. Over to you sir. Uh, typically, these are open source uh, C compilers to be used with the, uh, the precise uh, microcontrollers that we use and uh, uh, we provide you uh, the compilers and uh, depending on the processor which is available, there are ways, simple ways to just upload uh, your code, right, uh, onto the robot and, uh, and execute it. These things become very mechanical. Right. So, one is that you write your, your programs in C. So, when you come and attend the two day workshop, we teach you how to do that. We teach you how to take the con take control of the various resources on the, on the microcontroller right, uh, like how to, uh, how to take control of ports, use ports to drive the motors and uh, uh, to sense the various sensors on the robot and so on. And then we show you how to uh, do pulse width. Uh, modulation of uh, the motors to increase and decrease speed and things like that, show you how to use the interrupts and all that on the robot to, uh, uh, to, to do interesting things that you need to do, uh, like even control velocity and all that. So, what essentially happens is that typically we find with students, uh, computer science students, they have typically heard of, of interrupts and things like that, they le they've learnt about it in theory, but they have never used interrupts. So, it was quite heartening to see their excitement in actually having to write an ISR and execute it on the robot for instance. So, having said that, one of the languages that you can use on the robot is C, but we also have uh, 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 tools which can take estrel programs for instance. You can take an estrel program and use our tool chain to convert it into C program which can go and run the robot. So, you can program the robot at a higher level of abstraction. Then you can write MATLAB 
code if you like to control the robot and now we are uh, in the process of porting all this into Scilab. So, you can do visual uh, programming. Uh, these robots are also available inside the proprietary uh, robot programming environments like Microsoft Robotics Studio. The uh, CTO of uh, Microsoft was kind enough to give us a project here to port our robot into a Microsoft Robotics Studio. So, uh, you can do a visual uh, programming of the robot also in that, you can do a simulation of the of uh, the robot in that and uh, so on uh, before you actually uh, deploy the code on the robot. Having said that, I have a number of MTech students who are doing interesting projects on how to uh, harness open source uh, robot programming languages like player and stage to actually uh, program these robots. So, there is some research work also going on and uh, that can be a separate discussion. But the main programming language that we use to program these robots is C and we use uh, well off the shelf uh, compilers to uh, 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 to address uh, the processors. Any other questions? Thank you sir. Okay. Okay, that was useful. So, what we are trying to do is that we are trying to create a lot of software around these robots. So, the important thing is that if you want to get started, it becomes very easy for you because all the documentation is there videos are there of the various uh, projects and uh, you can also buy the robots off the uh, shelf right and uh, you can buy it on the net also now. And uh, if you come to our workshop, we will give you the initial uh, two robots and if you show that you are interested in hosting these kind of workshops, then uh, we will help you uh, uh, to set up uh, a lab with these robots and all that where you can host these workshops and also run student projects and uh, things like that. So, we are very keen to find enthusiastic faculty, very keen to find enthusiastic students who can help us spread this excitement that we have to other places in the country, right. And we are most happy to help if, if anybody is interested. We have a query from Jaipur Engineering College. Yes. What to organize the robotics workshop in, an, uh, in our college. So, how can I approach to you and what is the pro, uh, whole procedure to organize this workshop in our college? And also, we want to include all these uh, nearby colleges uh, in Jaipur and in other uh, in other cities. So, what is the procedure to uh, collect these all uh, colleges, faculties, and uh, different participants in our college? Um, good question, which I'm sure is on the mind of of uh, of other colleagues also. Start with registering yourself on the eantra.org uh, website that you are interested in, in either attending. It will start with two faculty from your college coming and attending a workshop at IIT Bombay and then we will get you started with everything else, right. That is the initial, well initiation if you like, right. Two people from your college come here and then we will we'll train them up and we will send them back with two robots and the whole story will start from there. You can also uh, contact through email uh, our program manager, Malti Baru. I have put her address up on the last slide and uh, she will get you started. And there are a couple of phone numbers also that you can call. There is a mobile number. So, there are lots of ways. Just write to us and we will get you started. So, we have scheduled uh, some workshops uh, starting from January. And uh, once we hear from uh, the various participants of this program, we can start scheduling workshops accordingly. Okay, there is a question from, uh, from Amrita Engineering College in uh, Kollam, want to develop some home cleaning robots. How? A good way to start is you can take the, the firebird robots that we have developed here and uh, again send people down to us, we will train them, send you back and then you can develop a home cleaning robot. The interesting thing is the algorithms that you will use. Right. So, there is no one best algorithm. There are a number of home cleaning uh, robots out there in the market and they and they deploy a variety of algorithms. Right. Uh, uh, one I have seen which which goes zigzag and uh, and covers a space. The other I have seen uh, like the Roomba, it goes in a spiral kind of direction and covers a space. The interesting problems that need to be solved in, in, in room cleaning robot is a number of things. How do you how do you localize yourself? 
right. Do you want some localization algorithm like do you want to be able to know where in the room you are, do you want to be able to map the room and then clean it or do you want to just blindly just go on spiraling and clean the room whichever it is. So, these, these things throw up a number of interesting questions because each of these techniques of room cleaning impact the nature of the robot, the nature of the algorithm and the cost of the robot. Right? Like if you want to have very sophisticated positioning and mapping of a room, right? then you need something like a GPS kind of thing, but you cannot use GPS inside a house. A GPS a global positioning system only works outdoors. So, how do you position yourself in an, in an enclosed space? Then it is up to you to choose various ways. One is that uh, the way we do it is that we mount a little webcam at a height, it looks down on the floor and uh, you can do image processing to identify where you are right or somebody else did the flip thing they use the webcam on the robot itself and it would look at the ceiling and by looking at the ceiling it would try and localize itself so it's like you're lying down on the robot and you look at the fan and based on the fan you know where the center of the room is because the fan typically is in the center of the room and then you localize yourself you find the walls and all that in fact, I have not shown you some other projects which have happened where a robot goes inside a space with obstacles and it tries to map out the room. So, you have this notion of SLAM, simultaneous localization and mapping, where through its sensors it tries to figure out where it is moving around and it tries to reconstruct the boundaries of the room. So, again there are some very interesting algorithms that come out of this, lots of algorithm issues and stuff like this. Then there uh, another student had done um, depth map mapping where you take two cameras like two eyes and by seeing the differential images from the two uh, cameras they are algorithms with which to sense the depth of objects in front of you. So, all this code is available to your students if they want to pick up where these students have left off. So, there are lots of other interesting issues that come. If you use a very sexy algorithm which is very uh, high bandwidth processing and things like that, you will need a very big processor on the robot, right. So, that increases the cost. So, typically what happens is that most of the image processing that we do here, right, is done by having a video, a wireless video uh, camera on the robot. These things are not very expensive and it, uh, it beams an RF signal uh, to the PC where it has uh, a receiver. So, you are getting real time video from the robot, but all the processing is done on the, the PC and the robot is just told how to move through the wireless communication, right. So, typically most of the image processing um, algorithms that we have on the robot presume a PC on which the real time video feed is being received, processed and the robot is being told what to do. But we are also working on a generation of a robot which has the processing capability also built into it, right. And we are hoping that once colleges jump onto the bandwagon, you might have some specific skills where you can build some interesting algorithms which others can use. And we were really heartened to see in the faculty who visited us, people who would make very good partners. They got, we have specialists in, in, in instrumentation, in control systems, in electronic design, power electronics. So, I am hoping that the more and more people come into the program, the more and more interesting uh, code you will get to build on, right, uh, uh, presuming these robots. So, maybe I should stop here, I have run out of time. There is one more uh, question. So, this is IPS Indore. Yeah, let us have your question. Sorry, this uh, uh, as we are the computer people, so how can we contribute this robot designing? Is there any need of basic mechanical engineering for what? Okay, the question from what I can hear is how can we contribute to the robot design? Is there some basic mechanical engineering and so on? See, the robot is kind of uh, has, has already been uh, designed for you initially. So, the basic robot is available, you can just buy it and deploy it and uh, once you start working with it, then you can start extending the robot. Now, there are various ways to extend it. Um, as you can see if, from the few videos that I showed, the students have taken servo motors and just integrated them into the robot. So, the, typically what they will use 
is that there was one uh, uh, pod that we have, it is a kind of servo mounted pod which is typically used to mount a camera and you can zoom pan tilt the camera and you can control it through one of the ports, uh, the expansion ports which are there on the robot right. All these things are documented in the hardware and software manuals and it is it's reasonably straightforward. And uh, so, using this, uh, this, this uh, servo motor, these guys built a device with which to do pen down and pen up when doing the drawing application. Similarly, others used another motor to uh, control a gripper arm, to open and close a gripper arm. Others have used, have made uh, out of mechano kind of components, a gantry with which a gripper arm can be raised up and lowered down. All these things are very simply interfaced with uh, the microcontroller uh, that we have. Um, once you got used to these robots and you studied the design of these robots, you can build your own robots and you can contribute your designs onto the Yantra uh, website. So, there is there is nothing stopping you from making your own designs and putting it up on the website, but we would like to have detailed diagrams, we would like to have detailed information as to how to reconstruct what you have built. So, there is nothing stopping you, this is all open source, it is to be shared with everybody, it is to uh, help others also do what you have done and uh, take it from there. So, yeah, so I think what you are also asking uh, if I might say is uh, how do we basically build these robots, okay. Most uh, the workshops that we give here at the moment are on how to use these robots and program these robots and take control of the microcontroller. But uh, the question you will well ask is how do you build these robots? So, we will address that in, uh, in other workshops that we plan to have. At the moment we are adding an image processing module into our workshops uh, because we have noticed that most of the interesting uh, projects that the students have done have an image processing component to it. So, we are adding an image processing module to this. And uh, like for instance, typically uh, we can cover this in about 2 hours. So, we are just adding this into our existing workshop. So, it is amazing what we can do in 2 days with you, right. You can go away with a lot of knowledge, right. And then there are so many other things to do, like we want to know more about AI, artificial intelligence and how we can use AI to control robots. So, this is only a start. Watch this space, we will come up with more, more content that we will deploy on the workshops and we are hoping that you faculty out there, once you get into the program, you want to develop special skills, hopefully you will share them with us and, and help us build specialized modules like say control systems modules or maybe even an AI module, right, with which we can illustrate AI algorithms on these robots. So, so this is only a start and uh, I shall stop here unless there are any more questions, okay. So, I think we will, uh, we call it a day here and if you have any inquiries, please address them to the email addresses at the end of uh, the presentation. We are happy to get you started and uh, this program is, is going to be uh, greatly expanding this year. So, the best time to talk to us is now and uh, once we have responses from at least this lot of engineering colleges we will be in a, in a position to schedule uh, workshops to which we can invite you starting from January. So, I, I strongly urge you to go to our, our website, register yourselves whoever is interested and write to us and uh, we will get you plugged into the system, okay. So, uh, I shall stop here. Thank you.